Hi everyone, this is a continuation of the uh, separation methods video. We're going to talk about uh, a couple additional methods that we can use to separate mixtures, um, you know, to, to separate them into their pure substances that compose the mixture. So the third uh, method I want to mention real quickly here is uh, crystallization. This is not something you'll see, uh, you know, in, in this class necessarily, not in, in the form that I'm going to talk about but it's actually quite an important technique again especially in organic chemistry so I just want to mention that here a lot of times what you do is you um, you know let's say you have a mixture here let's say you have water and actually another compound here like uh, sodium acetate in this particular case and you want to separate them now but how you know how do you, how can you separate them because they they look like they're mixed well it looks like just one face right now what you can do is you can crystallize the sodium acetate and this relies on the idea that the sodium acetate is at a certain concentration. Okay, so there's quite a bit of sodium acetate, but it's still in the liquid state. A lot of times what happens is if we were to put just a small piece of solid uh, sodium acetate in the crystal form, okay, crystal in this case referred to a particular way of uh, the solid are um, arranged in the molecular structure, then uh, you know, within a, a second or two, you'll immediately get these needles that are formed in the same solution. And those are all crystals. So then, of course, once you have it in this form, what you can do is you can either filter it, so you can separate the, the you know, these needle crystals from the solution, or you can centrifuge it and then collect the crystal at the bottom by decanting, okay? So that's kind of a, a third way that's really powerful in terms of separation. And the crystal is a pure form of the substance, so you can then make a lot of analysis on the crystal. Now, the fourth uh, technique I want to talk about is chromatography. This is another, yet another technique that we can use to separate uh, liquid from liquid. Um, so the way you're going to do this is you're actually going to be doing this uh, uh, paper chromatography in your one of your experiments in the lab uh, in the first uh, couple, you know third week of your class this semester but the way this works is basically you rely on uh, the fact that there's two different phases so what do I mean by the two different phases I mean that in any uh, chromatography system you have two components one component is referred to as the mobile phase and this component can move during uh, the chromatography process and then there's another component which is called the stationary phase which is the component that doesn't move or cannot move during the uh, chromatography process itself and the way this the, the, the you know the different substances in a mixture is separated is based on the fact that the different um, you know pure substances in your mixture would be attracted differently to the mobile versus the stationary phase okay so for example let's say I'm, we're talking about a specific uh, pure substance you know call it X or something if X is uh, more attracted to the stationary phase than the mobile phase you can start and run your chromatography uh, for a certain period of time and after that time is finished you'll notice that the sample X uh, is hardly moved from where you're starting from because it's more attracted to the stationary phase. Let's say in that same sample you have another um, component, call it uh, substance Y, and Y is more attracted to the mobile phase. When you run the same chromatography system, the uh, this Y sample will then be more attracted to the mobile phase. So by the end of the period for the chromatography, you'll notice that sample Y will be found uh, very much where the mobile phase uh, ends. So in other words, if you have sample X and Y, or pure substances X and Y in your sample, you can separate the two of them because one of them is more attracted to the stationary phase and the other one is more attracted to the mobile phase. Okay? And they're going to be at different locations. As a result, they could be separated from each other. Okay? Now let's take a look at a, a quick example here, which is paper chromatography, and then you'll be able to answer this question afterwards, which is what's the mobile phase and what's the stationary phase in a paper chromatography uh, setup. In a paper chromatography, you basically have um, a setup that looks like this. You have a filter paper, and then you put your sample on the filter paper. Okay, So you, put, uh, you dot your sample, actually, so you just kind of put it, uh, you know, a small, very small sample uh, at a line, a starting line, 
and then you put all your samples here let's say okay and you then take that paper and you put it in a container and then the container has been filled with some kind of solvent this is usually some kind of organic solvent it's the most common one like some kind of a hexane or a uh, combination of hexane with other you know methylene chloride or, or some other solvent okay if you let this sit uh, for a certain period of time what happens is there's capillary action uh, of the liquid up the paper so at some point uh, the liquid will actually move up the paper okay so as you can see here when the liquid moves up it turns out that this dot that you put in there uh, contains different components in them different pure substances which is the blue the red and the yellow components right and you can see that they're attracted to the paper and to the um, solvent that's moving up differently the yellow uh, moves up the most the blue moves up the least because the blue is uh, attracted more towards the paper whereas the yellow is attracted more towards the solvent so that's basically the stationary and the mobile phases that we're talking about earlier okay you can do chromatography in the context of what we call a column chromatography as well in this case basically you have a, a column okay that's set up um, with certain types of beads or, uh, or or what we call a resin a lot of times in here and what you do is you pour your sample through it now as you pour your sample through it the sample contains solution so it's gonna fall down by gravity right because it contains some solution in there so it's just gonna go through the column by gravity just like when you pour you know pour anything down a, a pipe or something it will fall down right um, now the way it's gonna fall down uh, and how fast it's gonna fall down you know different components depends on the interaction of the sample in this in this black sample the different substances in this black sample to the component of that resin that I poured down earlier okay so in this case it turns out that that black sample which may be ink for example uh, contains blue red and yellow and it turns out that the yellow moves the fastest um, because it interacts the least with the um, resin that I put in there in the column so as a result the yellow comes out first so then you can collect the yellow first and then afterwards you can collect the red and then afterwards you can collect the blue so then the three components uh, the three pure substances in the black uh, sample which is yellow uh, red and blue are all separated okay so that's the concept of um, paper uh, I mean uh, chromatography in general both paper and column chromatography okay okay so here let me just show you a, an example this is a YouTube movie uh, on how a paper chromatography would run so you have these two dots like I said earlier let's say you have two samples here and you want to know inside each sample let's say inside the green one inside the yellow one you know what pure substances do you have and you want to separate them from each other okay uh, once I put the paper with the sample inside the container that contains a solvent remember so this this little shading here is for the solvent I can start to just let it go and run it okay I'm gonna play the movie now and you can see that as the solvent goes one of the dots is taken up further um, than the other dot okay so that tells you that which you can and you know you can answer several questions here one, one of the questions is which sample is more attracted to the mobile face and which sample is more attracted to the stationary face and so on okay uh, and again these are uh, things that you'll be doing in your lab you know in a couple of weeks